China's sprint to challenge US dollar dominance. News headlines are dominated by stories of China, from their economy stumbling, their alliance with Russia, and the BRICS. More and more noise about war in the South Sea and cooperation such as the Belt and Road Initiative. And all of those things are troubling, specifically for the global superpowers of the US and Europe. But recently, China has been making big moves that really have the US and the IMF worried, something that could really challenge the dominance of the US dollar. So in this video, I'm going to break down what China has developed that has the US and the EU and now the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, worried. We're going to look at who is involved, just how far along this advancement is, how it works, what the IMF is trying to do about this, and what you need to be watching as this all unfolds. So let's go. All right, welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Mark Moss. I make these videos to change the way you think about money because yes, almost everything you've learned is wrong. It's very hard to understand what's going on. You hear too many competing voices and of course, the media, they're not doing any favors, but don't worry. We make it very easy, actionable for you to understand and know what to do. Now, real quick, I just wanna say, if you love macroeconomics, if you're in the charts and graphs all day long, if you're in the news cycle, you love it, well, I'm looking for somebody just like you to join my team. There's a link down in the description down below, maybe a QR code up on the screen, something like that. If you are already doing this, if you're already in the charts, if you love the data, then I think I need you. So click on the link, let me know, some of your info, let's, uh, let's connect. All right, let's jump into this video. Now, real quick, China is falling, right? Well, you see it everywhere you look. Every news headline, all the videos on YouTube this last week or two, uh, Bloomberg, everything is all about how China's economy is collapsing. You can see it, here's Bloomberg right here. China's, uh, China escalates a battle against its Yuan bears. The Yuan falls to the lowest level since November. We got uh, why Xi Jinping is letting China's economy f uh, flail. The worst defaults in months. Big structural forces are holding China's economy back. You see it on YouTube over here. Uh, all kinds of stories about China, China's housing slump, China hasn't provided enough jobs, um, and of course, war. <laughs> you see that all over the place. And of course, there's no reason why not to. There's plenty of bad things to talk about China with. Massive amounts of debt that make the United States debt look tame. They have horrible demographics because of decades of a one-child policy where they have too many old people, not enough young people. It's a serious problem. A major energy problem where most of their energy fossil fuels have to be imported. Um, and I can go on. Now, we know that, again, China's markets are stalling. They're crashing is probably a better term. So we have that as well. And now, after someone goes broke, then there's typically a threat of war. Now, is this because China needs to go to war to protect itself? Or the U.S. doesn't like its rising threat from China? Or is it a combination of? But I'm not talking about any of those things today. What we're talking about is China has now been doing cooperation and building that is slowly and now all of a sudden rapidly starting to grab what the US dollar has as its number one weapon. That's what we're gonna talk about today. That is, of course, the US dollar. Now, China has been building partnerships for a long time. We hear about the BRICS, right? Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. You hear about like the Belt and Road Initiative where China has basically been cooperating with other nations. Some may so doing coercive loans, but mostly cooperating to build new shipping lanes, to have global trade happening all over the world. And, and the reason why I say that is because, I, I hate to say this, but as an American, I, I believe that America became great because we led the way as I believe each one of us should lead by example and hopefully other follows. America had American exceptionalism because we, we industrialized and we created new technologies and we shared that with the world. And now, unfortunately, it seems like China's been the one doing the cooperation while the United States has taken this very coercive stance. Don't do this, can't do that, sanctions on you, sanctions on you. That's a scary situation that we're in. And now China has a new partnership on something called the M-Bridge. And the M-Bridge is a big, big deal. Now it's a joint partnership with China, Thailand, Hong Kong, and UAE. It's important because of course, China, uh, you already know about China, but Thailand being one of the trading partners, of course, Hong Kong is the gateway to the global capital markets. It's a big deal. And of course the UAE, United Arab Emirates, which is their energy partner. Now all this is being done in coordination with the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, which is like the bank, the central bank above all the central banks. Of course, I talk about them quite often. 
Now, I'm calling this the leapfrog. You've heard me talk about this before. The leapfrog is when a new technology happens that's so revolutionary that it can skip over one of the previous steps. So what do I mean by that? An example is in the United States, we had wired telephones across the whole country. And so the US got internet very quickly because it used the wired telephones to put the internet through. But in Africa, the continent was not wired for telephones. And so instead of being held back by that and needing telephone wires first, they leapt right over and went straight to wireless. That's what we're talking about. And that's exactly what is happening with China and the project Embridge. Now, instead of needing the dollars payment network, the SWIFT system, the correspondent bank system, and all of those things that the US banking system, or I should say the US payment network has, Project Embridge aims to just leap right over that and not even need any of that. Just use completely new technology to reduce cross-border payments. This is one of the big things. That global trade has been basically, well, it's allowed to flourish because the dollar has been so dominant. But now as these nations don't want to trust the dollar anymore for any number of reasons, including massive sanctions against everybody, then they're all looking for a new way to send money across borders. The other problem is that using the dollar network that's there right now, while we can move money across the world, it's slow. The US banking system works on banking hours five days a week, you know, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and lots of banking holidays. Now, if the, another country wants to move money, but it's a US banking holiday, they can't. And so they can move money from days right now into seconds. Now, already right now, this group that's been working on this project, Project Embridge, has already moved over half a trillion dollars of goods and services. This is already up and running. They're already testing this out. And it's mainly foreign exchange reserves, deals between other central banks. So this is a central bank digital currency where they're sending money back and forth between banks, but it's not a retail central bank digital currency, at least not yet. We'll get to that. All right, so here's how this works. It's sort of like a cryptocurrency token. It's a ledger system. So basically, if you're a company in China, you're manufacturing a product and you need to get supplies from a vendor. So a company in China would pay a vendor, let's say in the UAE. And so they'll go to their bank and say, hey bank, pay that vendor in another country. What happens is the company's bank in China would issue a digital yuan token, an e-token, a yuan CBDC on the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, on their ledger, on the central bank's ledger. Then that token, that crypto token or whatever you wanna call it, the CBDC token, moves in seconds, not days, moves in seconds to the vendor's bank account over in their country in the UAE. Once it's there, the bank at the UAE will then credit the vendor's account with the local currency, so they'll do the conversion. And so, I'm in America, I wanna pay someone in Mexico, I go to my bank, hey, pay that vendor in Mexico, they would create the digital token, send the digital token in seconds, when the bank receives the digital token, they'd convert it and put the pesos into that customer's account. That's how this works but it bypasses the entire global payment system that we have today, the SWIFT system, the dollar denominated system. It also helps those nations, well, if they don't have to use their system, they don't have to abide by the rules of that system, which of course the rule makers don't like at all. What are the stakes of this? Well, the stakes are US dollar dominance. That's a pretty big deal. The US has enormous benefits from having the dollar reserve currency of the world, and more specifically, being able to weaponize the dollar payment system. We don't like something you're doing, sanctions on you, oh, sanctions on you, and what the heck, sanctions on you too. Now, we've seen the weaponization of the dollar network. The problem is, the more people you continue to kick out of the payment system, well, they don't just go away and die, they have to find a new payment system. They've been forced to create a new system and that's exactly what we're seeing. Now this isn't a small deal, this is a big deal. This is what's at stake. 6.6 .6 trillion every single day in transactions. 32 trillion per year in transactions. Now, there's two differences here. We wanna talk about the global reserve currency and then the global payment currency. So the reserve is when you're a, a, a nation and you've got hundreds of billions of dollars and you need to store it, you save it, you park it. And so that goes into the dollar system because of the deep liquid bond markets and treasury markets that we have. But then there's the payment side of things and this is the payment side of things. Now when sanctions are applied, that's typically on the payments. You can no longer pay this country for those goods. For example, the people that are you know, on board with NATO can't buy oil from Russia anymore. 
for example. So it's typically the payments, but this is attacking the payments. And again, instead of using the traditional dollar payment network, it's leapfrogging to a brand new network that will be free of those sanctions. Now, of course, again, if you're the rule makers, you don't like that. You don't want other people getting around your set of rules, and that's exactly what's going on. The US and the EU aren't too happy about this, and the IMF wants to step in. The IMF says that they want to avoid a situation where this new technological innovation, a technical solution, becomes a geopolitical tool. Hey, it's really cool that China and the BIS and these other groups have put this together. That's cool. It's a really nice technical innovation, but we don't want them to have control over it and heaven forbid, weaponize it against other nations, sort of like what the US has done. We certainly don't want that to happen. It's, it's already so far advanced that the IMF is getting worried and they're discussing now bringing it in under their control. I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna happen, but this is what they wanna try to do. And they want it to be under control, not by China, but by some, you know, international organization. Of course, a NGO, a non-governmental organization, most likely, of course, control the money, control the world. Now, the dollar is still the king. And it doesn't look like the dollar will be replaced anytime soon. I am certainly not saying that this is going to instantly replace the dollar. But the dollar is suffering from a death by a thousand cuts. It is dying slowly and it's chipping away at it. Now, it's not the first time the dollar has been threatened. We know that the, um, the BRICS currencies, the BRICS nations are actually meeting this week at the time of this recording. And there were rumors about them announcing some new gold-backed currency, which looks like it's been postponed. I'll make a video on that coming up soon. But there was a time when the US was threatened by another currency called the Euro. And we see some headlines here. The Wall Street Journal says that the U.S. isn't expected to feel big impact from the euro's debut. Don't worry, the euro's coming, but it's not going to be a big deal. The dollar isn't really going to feel it. Uh, we see headline, why the euro is going to fail? Uh, why, what is the fundamental flaw in the European monetary system? Don't worry, their system is so flawed it's never going to work. We're not going to feel the impact of it. The euro market failure or central bank failure. Look, this is a big failure. It's, it's going to fail. It's doomed to fail. All the things that you hear about the BRICS currency, all the things that you would hear about a China currency. We hear the same thing. But when it rolled out, now it certainly hasn't taken away dominance for the US dollar. The dollar is still the dominant currency. But what we did see is the dollar lost 45% of its value after the euro launched. Right? The dollar continues to lose value over and over, which means the cost of goods goes up. Or another way is that the dollars in your bank account buy less goods and services. So. I'm not saying that the dollar is going to be replaced immediately, uh, but it is going to continue suffering uh, the death by a thousand cuts. We will continue to see it losing its dominance, losing its purchasing power, and you need to be prepared for that. So hopefully this is a good heads up. I'll definitely be keeping you up to date as advancements happen. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, shout out real quick, if you love macro, if you love the news cycle, if you're looking at charts and data, Fed policy all the time, let me know down below. There's a link because I'm looking for somebody just like you to join my team. So I'd love to have you. As always, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down. That's okay. But at least tell me why in the comments down below. And that's what I got. All right, to your success. I'm out.